What's up guys? So today they just announced the DJI Mavic Air. Um, so we're going to run through the website um, and go through the specs, um, kind of compare it to what the, the Mavic and the Spark does and just kind of give you my first impressions on whether the drone is something you should purchase um, and what I'm planning on doing. So I'm pretty excited about this drone. It's a tiny drone. Um, it looks like it's a little bit bigger than the Spark, but, um, but a lot like half the size of the Mavic currently. Um, and it folds up super tight and tidy and the gimbal is a lot more protected. Apparently it shoots 4k video. Yeah. So it acts like a spark, but takes video like a Mavic. So do you need your Mavic pro anymore? Are there benefits to holding on to your Mavic Pro or should you sell your Mavic Pro to get this guy? It's super small, it's super portable, but only time will tell whether this is um, a good replacement for your Mavic. Because I gotta be honest guys, my Mavic Pro is stable. It's, it flies like a dart. Um, and if this Mavic Air flies like my Spark does, my Spark, even though it's rugged and it's tiny, still has some issues in the wind or it's still kind of, it doesn't hover in one spot. Whereas the, the Mavic Pro just stays where it's at. So I'll be anxious to see in some of the hands-on uh, reviews as to whether it stays in one spot or if it kind of wavers like the Spark does. But yeah, we're gonna go through the website. So today you can buy it for $7.99 to get extra, to get a bag and extra batteries and charging station, the fly more package, that's $9.99. Um, and they said it's gonna be available this month. So we'll see how that goes. Um, All right guys, here it is, the Mavic Air Adventure Unfolds. Um, so it's a cute little guy. So this looks like the DJI Spark um, with all the foldable goods that I think it should have had um, of the DJI Mavic Pro and the platinum but i don't want to keep talking about the platinum and the pro because i feel like the pro is just the platinum was just kind of a they just kind of added some extra things that they wish they would have put in the first time so we're not going to talk about the platinum we're just going to go with the mavic pro so the mavic air adventure folds um this thing's really cool guys so it has these little um something that dji spark was missing was a landing gear um, you would basically put the thing down on the ground and your fragile little camera was right, like right next to the ground. Um, so what they've done here is they've added some stilts, which is great. Um, and overall, the design is kind of like the spark and they cut the back of it off and put, you know, they added this little air, air raid system that, you know, sucks air in and keeps it cool. So, and from what it looks like, Usually like, you know, like old hot rods had this big scoop on the front. And so moving forward, you would push air in it. What it looks like to me is you've got these little vents right here. And these fan, these blades are just going around in a circle and they're blowing air right up in there. They're, I mean, for the most part, they're going down, but there's air going this way too, guys. So that's kind of neat. And it's got these, these two sensors on the front. Um, it's got a sensor on the bottom. It's got sensors on the back. So let's go a little bit further. Um, so here come some of the specs. Uh, 32 megapixel sphere panoramas. Um, they've recently added this to um, their DJI Mavic Pro and the DJI Spark. So this isn't a new feature. The 32 megapixels uh, might be a new spec. Um, but uh, we've had hack software um, you know, for years that, that we could do this with. So it's, it's, what's nice about it is that it's part of the drone and the part of the, uh, proprietary software that comes with the drone. So now you don't have to worry about software that some other guy made taking control of your drone and flying and, you know, having flyaways and stuff. Foldable and portable. Um, the Spark didn't have that, but the DJI Mavic Pro did. 3 axis gimbal and 4K camera. Guys, this is something when the Spark came out, we were all like, why doesn't it have a 4K camera? 
why only two axis gimbal? So, you know, I know they cut costs to, to get the spark out. Um, but to me, the three axis gimbal is a must. Um, the two axis gimbal is okay, but, um, and it works up and down and it works side to side. But when you're spinning the drone around, um, it's, it's very obvious. So three axis gimbals, great job guys. Um, three directional environmental sensing. This is exciting because I have a story to tell you guys about when I got my DJI Mavic Pro, I was all excited to show my father at Thanksgiving. We were flying around his, his property, you know, flying up in the air and, you know, I was doing some really cool aerial shots. Um, kind of my go-to shots, flying down the driveway, stuff like that. And then I decided to show him some of the autonomous modes. And I put the thing in um, follow me mode and drew a green square around myself. And I started walking across his front yard. And that drone just flew as fast as it could sideways right into my dad's roof. I, we had to get a ladder and I'm scared of heights. So we had to get it on the ladder and I had to go up and get it. And Anyway. So this three-directional environment sensing means that it's sensing from the rear too, guys. You know, when you're about to run out of battery and you're trying to maneuver it around trees and stuff like that, you don't want sensors to just be in the front. Or this thing can fly two miles away. So if you're even close to anything two miles away, you can't tell what's... The only thing that you can see is what's coming out of the camera. And the camera's in the front of the gimbal or in front of the drone. And you can point it down so you can see what's under you or in front of you. That's about it. Why hasn't anybody put a Voinant system in the back of a drone until now? I don't know. But I think that's awesome. Smart capture. Like I told you the story about Thanksgiving. Um, and, and keeping as much control as possible. I will fly my drone with the remote control and I will keep my thumbs on the stick. I'm not going to fly it with my hand. Um, I'm not going to wave at the, at the drone. For one, you're going to get stupid footage. And um, two, um, if something bad happens, you have no control. If it, if it turns around and flies away from you, it won't even see you anymore. <laughs> so this scares the crap out of me. 21-minute um, flight time. Uh, it's kind of a benchmark by now. Um, the spark only flies at 11 minutes. So... 21 minutes is back to the, you know, it's the benchmark for the Mavic and all my, most of my um, good drones fly about 20 minutes. Um, your life, now epic. So here's a close up of the three axis gimbal. Um, something interesting is they've um, put gimbal, gimbal dampeners in here. They help create even steadier shots. What that means is there's all these little rubber, um, rubber padding throughout this setup so um, a lot of the vibration from the blades um, is not going to affect the gimbal and how um, and how it works um, here's the the sphere mode um, everything is beautiful hopefully it does exactly the same as the other drones where it creates a folder and I can go in and um, stitch them myself um, but if it stitches this straight out of the camera, that's golden, guys. You can easily get a good planet out of that. But this this guy, I can do better than that in Photoshop. That's that's silly. Um, 4K, 100 megabits per second video. That's awesome uh, for such a tiny foldable drone to have 4K, 100 megabits per second video. That's stabilized by a mechanical gimbal. Um, if you guys saw my review on the Breeze, the Breeze recorded 4K video, but it was useless because it wasn't stabilized. Stabilization is very important, especially if you've got this vibrating RC quadcopter in the sky. So that's very important. Slow motion video. So this is kind of cool, guys. 1080p, 120 frames per second. That's great. I'm super excited at that, especially if you're like, if you're doing like 24 frames per second for your final video, 
Um, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, HDR photos. Um, this is kind of interesting. It says there's HDR al algorithms that help you obtain the right exposure settings. Um, so back in the day when we used to create HDR pictures with our uh, digital SLRs, um, you would bracket a shot. And basically what it would do is it would take three or five pictures, one right after the other, um, and it would have a really overexposed shot. So you'd um, the sky would be like completely white, but you'd get all these shadows. And then you'd have a regular shot and you'd get an underexposed, which would make kind of all this black, but you'd actually get the sky. And then you'd combine those images together to make HDR. So I don't know... and and a tricky way to do that is you could take a raw picture and then you could um, export it at three different exposure rates and then combine them together. So I kind of think that's what this is doing, um, but I'm not sure. 12 megapixel stills, um, uh, f-stop of 2.8. Um, yeah, the cameras, I feel, the, I feel like the camera is about the same as the Mavic, or maybe a little less. I'm not sure. It might be more, um, but we'll see. Um, eight gigabytes internal storage. This is amazing, guys. I can't tell you how many times I've got my camera set up on the tripod. I've got my microphone um, wired through my vest. I've got it. I've got. I'm all hooked up, and I'm ready to shoot my YouTube video. And then I've got. I've got no memory in my, no memory card in my drone. And I've even like gone back to my car like when I set it up I'm set up at the book that at a picnic table and I've like left everything at the picnic table hoping nobody steals it running back to my car to get another camera and pull the SD card out of it so these are pictures that were shot um, these are awesome guys these are super cool that is beautiful I want that as my desktop um, and this is pretty amazing too so um, camera looks really good. That's a cool shot. I might try that. Did you see this one, guys? There's a guy standing and he's got this really, really long shadow. That's really cool. So, that's neat. Built for every adventure. Geometric elegance. Um, so, the look of this thing is awesome, guys. It's got 3D folding design. Um, so, I was looking at this earlier. This is what it looks like folded. This is what it looks like unfolded. Um, just a cool design, guys. Let's go back to folded. Like this thing is so tiny. It's like the, it's like what I wanted the spark to be, and now they did it. Um, we've got a black version. I think the black version is super cool. Um, and then the red. I will probably get the red because it matches my spark foldable remote um, so when I was looking at this earlier these sticks come off of the remote which is the first time that's happened it might happen on the platinum I don't have the platinum but the fact that these sticks come off these sticks come off and they tuck in there and then this thing closes up um, the danger is you might lose a stick and that would be horrible because then you couldn't fly your drone but um, but these sticks that come off and fold up means that you don't have um, this controller snagging your pot the inside of your pocket or anything like that so that's awesome they did away with the screen um, they did away with the screen on the spark um, I love it on my Mavic Pro um, but I can definitely live without it you've got on your smartphone you've got everything going on so that's pretty cool and something else to say that this controller tethers to your phone so you don't have to go over Wi-Fi to hook up to it or anything like that, whereas you have to do that with the Spark. Um, but yeah, this tether's awesome. Easy to fly, fun to fly, or easy to use, fun to fly. Active track, so basically, kind of like my Rilo 360 camera does, you touch it, touch something on the screen, and then you basically just say, follow this, and it'll track it. But it can track multiple people at the same time, and you can give one one person priority uh, which is kind of cool um, quick shots this asteroid shot is awesome so it's great to see that 360 degree videography is becoming a thing I don't know if this is a video or if it's just a picture 
but that's pretty awesome. And then this boomerang shot they showed was pretty awesome, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, smart capture, again, this freaks me out. Um, you should have a controller in your hand when you're flying a drone. That's just my personal experience. Um, every time that I've um, told a drone to do something, usually I've had some calculation wrong or I walked in front of it, you know, I walked behind a tree or um, I didn't, ca like on my Bebop Parrot, I would create a mission, but um, the battery would die before the mission was finished. So it would just, um, it would start just landing in the tree and stuff like that. So this scares me, but fly at your own risk. And this looks so dangerous to me. I would never say, go over there. Like I would never point on the screen and say, go over there. Because there are so many dangers here. It might be an amazing little robot that can avoid everything. But this scares me. So vision-based protection. Flight Autonomy 2.0. Um, it's got powerful sensors, which is awesome. Uh, thrill of the flight. So 21-minute flight time. New way of, uh, of using the motors so that it's more efficient which is awesome. Max speed, it's 68.4 kilometers per hour. I don't even know what that that is. I'm in America. Enhanced Wi-Fi video transmission. So um, it still will give you 720p live video, um, which, which is awesome. And as you can see from the picture, it's got the antennas are in the landing gear. And then it works with the DJI goggles. Um, I haven't played around with the goggles, but they look pretty cool. So this is the Mavic Air 799. Um, with the 799 price, you get the controller. Um, you get a battery, you get a gimbal cover, you get sync cables, you get blade protectors, you get blades. So check this out, guys. So there's four blades, four extra blades. So you can completely crash your bird and still have enough blades to get right back up into flying. You've got a sink cable. These are the removable sticks, guys. That's pretty neat. Um, this case, I don't know if the case is for the accessories or if it's for the drone. I would expect it to be for the drone, but I don't know because it's, it's not the same shape. Um, here's the drone. Here is the power cable and the power brick. All right. Now let's see what comes in the Fly More package. So in the Fly More package, everything is the same except you get an extra case. You get this battery charger, uh, which I love. I've got it for my DJI Spark, and I wish I had it for my Mavic. But this thing is awesome. And then you have two extra batteries. So, and this guy, whatever that is. All right, guys. So that's it. Those are my first impressions. What do you think of the drone? Is it something you're going to go out and get? Is it something you're going to wait? I'm probably going to wait a couple months um, just because there's other gear and stuff that I want to buy. But, and there's no way I'm going to be the first, first one on YouTube to talk about it. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, what do you guys think? Is it going to be awesome? So, leave comments down in the descriptions. Like, please subscribe to my channel. And um, we'll get more content out there for you guys. So peace out. Have a good day.